email? Yep. Uh, solvent does the dissolving, the solute is the thing being dissolved. Exactly. The solvent does the dissolving, the solute is what gets dissolved. Now in living systems, what is almost always the solvent? In fact, we call it a universal solvent. Water? Water. Water is, in living systems, almost always the solvent. Now, when we're talking about hypotonic solutions, I'm going to learn about hyper in a minute. A solution cannot be hypotonic all by itself. The idea of hypotonic and hypertonic, they go together. You can't have one without the other. Because in hypotonic, we have a higher concentration of solvent, lower concentration of water. If we're talking about higher and lower, I to the hypertonic side. One of the things that can help you remember that, if you remember O comes before R in the alphabet, always goes from the hypo to the hyper. But you have to remember to enunciate the R, otherwise you're going to think it's an E and get over it. And you say, well, that's stupid. I, mean, I guarantee you, first night of the test, I'm going to have somebody sitting at their desk, R. <laughs> happens. Just like when you teach chemistry, when you learn about oxidations and reductions, you always teach about, well, you know, the Hawaiian says gar, so they remember which one is which. Give that exam, sure enough, somebody's sitting there. Grr, oh yeah. <laughs> Whatever works. Is that why fertilizing, like, too much is a bad thing? Well, the problem is... It, Oklahoma. Oklahoma, thank you. Suppose this is a cell. Let's suppose this is a container it's in. Yes, I know the numbers that are up here are unrealistic. I'm just too lazy. It still works. Suppose that the interior of that cell is 15% water <clears throat> and the exterior of that cell is 25% water. Things you would need to know how to do is tell me which side is hypotonic, which side is hypertonic, and which way is that water going to move. So, who thinks you know which side of this, the inside or the outside, is hypotonic? What do you think? The inside or the outside? The 25 or the 15? The 15. Nope. The hypotonic side. There's less water on the inside. That's the hypertonic side. So which way is the water going to go? It's going to go into that cell. And that water is going to continue to move into that cell until one of two things happens. What's one option? Yeah, one option is you could actually equalize it, retain it, get to an isotonic situation, and everybody's happy. What's the other option? It might explode. <laughs> Believe it or not, go all the way back to the Middle Ages, that was a form of torture. Poke a hole in your enemy and just pour in some water. If I stick you in the arm and start water will surround those cells in your arm, flood those cells and cause all the cells in your arm to blow up. All the way down, part of the way up. Painful as heck, but it doesn't kill you. Isn't that kind of the point of torture? We want to hurt you a real lot, but not kill you, because then you can't give us information. Yes, one, two, and then three. But in biology, water is the only solid. <coughs> Interesting. <coughs> and somebody over here had a question, no? It was me, but I OK. So let's look at another one. <clears throat> Salt, how much water do I have? 75. If it's 32% salt, how much water do I have? 68. So you can either do it by doing the math and figuring out water, or remember that the definition says hypotonic is lower concentration solute. Either way will work. So in this particular case, what's the water going to do? Go out. Water's going to go out of the cell. Goes in, one's coming out.